Hey guys, welcome back to the next video in this channel. Final video before the student portfolio review, which is going to start uh, tomorrow, Saturday. So uh, today we're going to jump into ZBrush and I'm going to show you the live booleans uh, inside of ZBrush, which is a, a feature that was added a, a couple of uh, like updates ago. And uh, we're going to be doing the exact same thing. Uh, I'm recording this back to back, by the way, because I'm focusing my time on finishing the Marmoset course. So uh, sorry if I'm not reading the, the comments and, and updating them uh, day by day, but uh, on, on the weekend, I'll, I'll go back and make sure to, to answer uh, every one of them. So yeah, we're going to be finishing this guy. We're not finishing. We're going to be uh, doing the exact same thing as what we did here, uh, but inside of Seaver. So I'm actually going to hide this thing. I'm going to go to my front view because I want to have this image here. I don't like using uh, image planes inside of Seaver. I know you can do it. I just don't like it. So I prefer using this see-through thing, which is going to be like a, like a reference, right? So I'm going to go here to my cylinder 3D and I'm going to make, make this a poly mesh 3D. I draw one cylinder. Whoop. There we go. Snap it here, and this is going to be roughly my size, right? I mean, we can scale it or do whatever we want. So if this is my normal camera, this would be the size of the cylinder. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Subtool, and I'm going to append a, no a new cylinder. So I'm going to go here into the cylinders. And this cylinder right here, let's get rid of this thing for a second. Whoop, there we go. This second cylinder, we're going to scale so that we cross across the, the whole thing. And now, again, I'm going to turn this seed through on, match the whole thing as close as possible, which would be something like this. I'm going to grab the second cylinder and I'm going to scale it so that we have roughly the same size as the little spheres there. So it should be something like this, right? About there, let's go to the side view, just extend it out because I want to see it. So probably a little bit smaller. Now I know that the image is rotated. I mean, I can go back here into, into Maya and just like rotate this back. Oh. Just say zero. There we go. So that we can perfectly match this thing. There we go. So now we've perfectly matched the, the thing right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to grab this guy and I'm going to say C plugin, subtool master, and I'm going to mirror on the Y axis because the first cylinder was on the ground. So the Y axis should give me the other side. It should give me, where is it? Did it not give me the... Oh, that's weird. Was it the other Y axis? Give me just one second here. Let's go see plugin, mirror, Y axis, or is it C axis? There we go, it was C axis, there we go. So that we get the, because the, it was the axis of the cylinder. I thought it was the world axis, but no, it was actually C axis. So I'm just gonna duplicate this guy. And then this guy, I'm gonna send to the pivot point using this button, and I'm gonna rotate at uh, 30 degrees. So let's turn this on, of course, so that we can see both. So we're gonna rotate this uh, 60 degrees. And then we're gonna duplicate this guy, center the pivot point and rotate this 60 more degrees. And that way we're gonna get our, uh, the things that are gonna be punching through our, our geometry, right? So now the only thing I need to do is I actually need to go here, go to the first tool, turn on live booleans and live boolean will activate the live boolean module inside of, uh, of ZBrush. And now what I can do is I can just select this one, which is uh, uh, subtract and we're gonna be subtracting the shapes from the element. Now, as you can see, one of the bad things about this tool as of yet, because uh, I'm gonna be showing you some tricks, is that we don't get the bevels. It's gonna be very difficult to do the bevels because what this is doing is it's uh, it's perforating the thing properly, but it's not giving us the result that we want because we don't have the bevels. And also we don't have a uh, number three, even if I were to turn on like a dynamics of division here, uh, it's not gonna give me the, the exact same result as in Maya. So. Uh, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna, whoa, yep. I'm gonna be showing you what the hell did I press? <laughs> I was not expecting this. What did I do? Hmm. I've never had this happen before. That's fine. I'm just gonna delete this one. I think I did some sort of like oppos uh, opposite operation or something. So let's just bring this back, go where this was supposed to be and just scale this up to about there. Uh, we're gonna um, move the tool up and then uh, there we go. So now we should be back to where we were. So uh, the cool thing about this is we can actually modify this thing for just a second. So I'm actually gonna go into my C modeler, B, C, or well, no, not yet. Uh, I like this thing for now. One thing we can do is I'm gonna, actually gonna combine these guys. So I'm gonna say merge, merge down. Okay, and then merge down so that the six elements are in one single subtool. It's gonna be a little bit easier to control. 
Now I'm gonna uh, do the little holes that we had on, on this side right here. And to do that, we need to uh, like create this Boolean mesh uh, to, me, to make it easier. So I'm gonna go into Boolean, make Boolean mesh. And what's gonna happen is I'm gonna get a new sub tool up here, which is gonna have the, the actual Boolean, which is this one right here. I'm gonna go to rotation and I'm gonna rotate this at 30 degrees. So that now we have this uh, center right here. And we're gonna do this exact same thing that we did before. I'm just gonna grab a, um, in this case, I'm actually gonna go into, into like a sphere. Cause I'm not sure. I know we have, let me see, maybe we do have the, cause sometimes on the cylinders we do have on the initialized tab, we have options such as the round cap, taper on, nope, cap, sub ratio, no. No, I don't think we have them. So let's go back here and uh, yeah, let's do a pen, a pen. I'm gonna grab a sphere. And then this sphere, that's the, like that, that's the radius that we wanna, we wanna look for. So I'm just gonna, again, try to match this thing here. And uh, we need to go back to Maya real quick. I mean, just to be a little bit more precise. And we're gonna say 30, there we go. I hate having to look down the, the microphones right here and I'm not sure, should it be there? Is that better for you guys? Maybe this, let me know if the audio sounds better here with microphone a little bit higher. Uh, so let's go here, let's reset this thing, reset this thing. And uh, we're gonna make this smaller, of course. Let's go to the poly mesh, where's the poly mesh? Really? I had my poly mesh. Did I change it? I think I changed it. So let me just delete this real quick. Make Boolean mesh again. There we go. So that's my mesh. So this one, we rotate 30 degrees. There we go. We match it right here. And here we're gonna append a new sphere. There we go. And then this sphere, we're gonna scale down so we get the exact same sort of like curvature that we have right here. There we go. So now what I'm gonna do is I am actually gonna grab my sphere and uh, I'm gonna mask it like a, like a drag mask like this, invert this and just kind of do like this sort of extrusion, right? Very similar to what we have in, in Maya. And that's gonna give me this sort of uh, long shape that again, we're gonna be able to light Boolean out of the thing, as you can see right there. Uh, and we're gonna do the exact same thing that we did before. So I'm just gonna uh, say C plugin, subtool master, mirror and uh, c-axis so that we get the bottom side we're gonna duplicate the uh, we're gonna uh, center the pivot point which should be on the on the very center of the grid move this uh, 60 degrees duplicate divide uh, and just 60 degrees and there we go we're gonna have the exact sh same shape that we had in maya without the bevels of course now we're gonna make this a boolean mesh and some of you might be like, well, this is perfect. This is exactly what I was looking for. Yeah, but if we do subdivision, we're gonna get this horrible thing. So again, if you're going to 3D print this, fine. If you're gonna do a retopology, which I would say it's easier to just model in Maya, uh, fine. Uh, but let's say we wanna actually like fix this thing. Is there a way to fix this thing inside of Seabrush? And the answer is yes. It is not gonna be as perfect as in Maya, I would say, but it's gonna, it's gonna work. So I'm gonna go here in C Remesher and I'm gonna turn on this detect edges thing. And now what I'm just gonna do is I'm just gonna hit, uh, hit C Remesher. And as you guys know, if you've been using ZBrush for a while, C Remesher will recalculate the surface of your object and it will uh, reproject the silhouette of your element so that it fits a proper, proper, uh, I say air quotes, because sometimes it makes a big, big mess, but it's gonna give you a cleaner topology. So it is a good option, but one of the things that you're gonna see is that it will probably be very, very dense. Now we can of course try to simplify it, which is what I'm gonna try to do, uh, but let's say if it works. So let's just give it a couple of seconds here for it to, to finish uh, doing the, the processing. Give me just one second here. Uh, there we go. And yeah, so this is the problem. As you can see, it is uh, not doing a great job. Even though we did have the detect edges, uh, it is trying, it, it did manage to find some way to do it here and it, it kind of works. Uh, but as you can see, it's it's kind of weird over there. Now I can actually turn on symmetry and I think that might help with the with the overall thing. So I'm gonna say freeze mesh border. Maybe that will help again as well. I'm gonna say C remesher. 
uh, remeshing a border. Why? Let's try again here. Okay, that was a freeze border was was the thing that was uh, messing it up. So maybe, okay, yeah, so with the symmetry turned on, you can see that we get a cleaner topology. It's not perfect, but it's better. And some of you may say, well, this is workable, right? Like if I were to do control D, control D, control D, and, and give it like several subdivisions. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's not horrible, but as you can see, it's not as clean as this. However, there are some shapes inside of Seabrush that are gonna be super easy to do and, and that you're gonna get uh, better or, or faster than in Maya. I'm gonna do a very quick example. Like if I wanted to do a very traditional like a ball and socket like union. So let's say I'm gonna I'm doing like a like a mecha thing, like a like a rubber or something. I could try using the same technique that I showed you here and say, well, Abraham told me use a, a small sphere here and, and try to like snap it to the vertices so that everything like uh, uh, booleans in a, in a better way. So it should be easy to just fix this topology here and then do a bevel and create a little thing here. Yeah, like it could work. It's gonna take you a long time to like fix this topology. There's gonna be a lot of edge loops going around. And if we, if we try to do something like that here inside of ZBrush, sometimes it's just gonna be uh, way, way easier. So for instance, let me select like a cube 3D, make polymesh 3D. I'm gonna go to uh, append sphere, grab the sphere, move it out, do the exact same thing that we did, like Make sure it's right there and right there. So as you can see, very pretty much similar to what we had. Boolean mesh, we create this shape right here. Make Boolean mesh. And again, if we're 3D printing, we're good to go. Like just export this and you're, you can print this without an issue. Uh, but if we want to make the this thing work in a, in a retopology kind of way, we can go again here to the detect edges and let's try again AC remesher. And what we'll get is this. So as you can see, this shape was solved in a way, way better way than the uh, gun uh, cartridge that we have here. So there will be some shapes that booleans are gonna be really, really helpful inside of Seabrush using this kind of techniques. And there are other shapes that you might wanna clean them up in Maya, like what we did with the original uh, uh, gun barrel. Uh, here, another thing you can do very, very easy, you can just go half and do another Siri mesh, and then another Siri mesh, and then another Siri mesh. And this is gonna keep it lower and lower and lower until we're gonna get very, very close to the Maya thing. So this is what we would build in Maya. Like if I had to clean this in Maya, this is probably what I would do. And uh, it will give me this very nice, like soft and, and hard result on the, on the element. And as you can see, doing things like this here inside of ZBrush, very easy, very fast. Uh, let me show you another example real quick because uh, we still have a little bit of time. Yeah, just a couple more minutes. So I'm just gonna delete here and let's say I wanna do like some more complex shapes here. So I'm gonna say uh, append and let's append like a cylinder and let's do like some, like some weird cuts across the surface, like, like, a, like a low cut down here. Again, I, I don't know why I would use this. Like if you're designing a mech or something, then this could happen. C plugin, mirror, uh, I believe this is C axis. Yeah, there we go. And we divide. So doing this sort of thing will be uh, complicated to say the least. Let's, and, and let's append one more. Oh. Uh, C plugin, mirror, C, there we go. Let's append one more. Let's do another like cube. And let's say I wanna remove like, like a section, like something like this, right? Maybe even in like an angle, right? Like doing angles is also really, really complicated sometimes. So maybe this is a shape that I need. There's a concept that I'm doing and I need this sort of shape and trying to like clean this topology inside of Maya would be a nightmare. But here we can make the Boolean mesh, go here, go back into geometry, see remesher with detect edges. That's the, that's the trick. Like if you're doing this sort of remeshing, the detect edges is gonna be the magic. And again, sometimes you'll get a very nice result and sometimes the result might not be exactly what you're looking for. So for instance, here, you can see this edge right here, uh, not so good. Everything else is working very nice, like this outer edge or back edge, that's, that's good. But this one, not super clean. And we can still keep this going uh, like lower and lower, but it's not gonna fix it. Like it's, it's just gonna keep, it's gonna keep softening it. So as you can see, we get this very, very soft edge on the bottom, which might not be what you want. That's why, that's why knowing topology, knowing retopology, knowing proper topology techniques and workflows, is gonna be super important for your career because there's gonna be times where you're not gonna be able to solve things in a traditional way, like you can see here, and you're gonna have to improvise, find other ways to do it so that it works uh, in the way that uh, you need it to work for the project. And that's it guys, uh, tomorrow and uh, Sunday, these are pre-recorded videos because I'm gonna be out of town. So I've pre-recorded, or I'm gonna be pre-recording the videos tomorrow probably, um, 
for you guys to see the, the reviews. Make sure to leave the comments. Let me know what you think about those. Uh, make sure to like, subscribe, share. And next week, we are approaching uh, the final weeks of this spooky month. So next week, we're going to start with a project. We're going to be doing a creature in Seabridge all week. We're going to be working on a very nice creature throughout the whole week. And we're going to be doing uh, the design. I'm going to show you my design process in like Photoshop, sketching and stuff. And then we're going to go into Seabridge, base meshes. And we're just going to follow the whole concept from uh, inception all the way to final render. So make sure to tune in next next week uh, because it's going to be I think it's going to be cool I've been, I've been having this idea about the creature for a long time and, and I really want to like make it. it's going to be like a, like a game like little enemy that you kill very often so I, I think you guys are going to like it so that's it for today guys I'll see you back tomorrow check out our first student portfolio review check out also our premium courses it helps us a lot if you want to take one of these premium courses uh, you know the links are in the description uh, and that's it I'll see you back on the next one guys bye bye